Uh, honestly, I think everybody uh, on our team that hits hit, and I think everybody got a hit except for one. Uh, so we outscored those guys uh, 27 to four um, in, in a doubleheader. Um, actually, a great way for us to finish. Uh, offensively, defensively, putting everything together. Uh, there's a team that went to Nationals last year, uh, ended up getting one of their players. Uh, is a great player for us, Sarah Ragsdale, uh, so it was kind of nice for her to play at home and show off a little bit. Uh, great way to finish fall, uh, like I said, offensively, defensively, pitching, base running the whole nine yards. So very, very happy with the way fall ended. I would agree with you. I would say that this is the best productive fall we've had. Wins or losses aside, even that record was pretty good, uh, but wins or losses aside, probably the most productive fall we've had in regards to a great way to start fall. I think we had a lull in the middle of fall, and we kind of kicked it up a notch. To win a championship, we need to be able to stretch a single, stretch a double out of a single. We need to uh, be able to steal second base on a changeup that the kids read from themselves and not given to me. Um, our hit and runs, our... Um, manufacturing uh, a run and not just because of a home run. And those are things that we did last year that we haven't implemented. At the end of fall, we started implementing those things and our, and our game's kind of taken off. Our ERA is the best it's been um, out of the end of fall right now. As a team, uh, five pitchers, it's a, a 2.89. Uh, that's fantastic. Last year, our ERA was about five. So we've actually cut that in half. So uh, doing great things. Some young players are doing great things. Um, probably the best fall since Lamar softball came back. Our newcomers. And our newcomers always improve uh, based on the fact that they have so much to learn. Uh, and we've had a couple kids. Uh, Sable Hankins, uh, who, who is a freshman player for us, went from, I'm not sure how she's going to be this, this fall, to uh, one of our top best players. Sarah Ragsdale, as a transfer, like I said, coming out of San Jacinto, she came up at the end of fall and, and kind of killed it. Um, and, and we've had a couple kids like that do, do very, very well. As a team average, uh, it was four, 409. Uh, and that's pretty impressive, uh, considering at the end of last fall, I want to say it was 289, sometimes 300. Uh, we're, we're, we're as a team, and that's where I allow everybody to play in the fall. We're at 409. So uh, we've had some, bi some big ones. Uh, Taylor Duck had an impressive 385 for fall. Uh, Ragsdale, 389. Uh, I think our leader, one of our leaders, uh, Jenna Holland, who struggled last year, was doing very well, hitting 436. Uh, Steph Musen hitting 400. Uh, Bryn Baca, 345. Uh, Casey Cromwell, 545. Um, uh, Sable, 441. Uh, Bowie hit 355. Um, Shannon Sane hit 500. Mac hit 325. Ashley McDowell. Amy Cisneros hit 333. So that was just to kind of name a few. Uh, and a lot of those are newcomers. So I love to see stats. Um, I, I don't necessarily go by stats, but at the end of the day, it's either you won or you lost, right? So very impressive stats-wise and very impressive fall. The more you bat doesn't mean the better you do. Uh, and, and those kids really took that opportunity to say, I'm going to work on stuff. It doesn't matter what the outcome was, but they got both. They worked on stuff, and the outcome was great. And we're playing. We're not playing the Sallies of the world this fall, and I think a lot of Division I teams do that. We played Baylor. We played LSU. had them both beat. Um, our pitchers did well. Um, we played junior colleges, both Weatherford and uh, San Jacinto, who send multiple kids to Division I every year. Went to national championship for their level. We're beating those guys. We're out hit those guys and scored 27 to 4. So we're doing some impressive things. Uh, definitely highs. Our February, uh, we're playing something like 18 games in 28 days. Uh, so you do the math on that. Our February is going to be hard, and it's going to be on the road. we got construction outside, so we're not going to play home until March. kind of gives those guys an opportunity to get the field done. Uh, so our February is very hard. Uh, we're, we're playing um, something like 14, 15 different conferences, uh, which is very impressive. It's very fun, so you're not seeing the, the same teams time after time. Uh, but we've added Mississippi State. Uh, and in football, they're number one right now, and in, in softball, they're a pretty good-looking team as well. So it's one of those that uh, uh, we're going to mix up the schedule, maybe play some teams we haven't, but those caliber of teams are still SEC, Big 12 um, type type of uh, 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 schedule for us. Um, so, again, our February is tough. The way we ended fall, I am very eager to kind of get started. We're, we're finishing up our last individual week, so we have 10 days of practice left. And then once finals start and after Thanksgiving, we're, we're done with practice. They're just lifting and conditioning on their own. So uh, the highs are definitely going to be another 56 games, uh, playing the Texases, playing the Mississippi States, playing the LSUs again, uh, playing Texas A&M again, and then uh, conference is getting harder and harder for us.